So, the city of Greater Geraldton um, are embarking on a uh, fairly reasonable size stormwater harvesting project. Um, and Jeff's described the vision for the city here, which um, is probably not uncommon to most places, but they want to support economic development, um, enhance the amenity of um, the town, basically deliver lots of community benefits while um, <coughs> remaining sustainable and environmentally friendly. So for Geraldton, one of the main issues that they need to address in achieving that vision is, um, is water supply. That's a major issue for Geraldton. They irrigate significant areas of public open space. Um, and like most areas on the Swan Coastal Plain, they do utilise groundwater to the extent that it's possible. Um, but up in Geraldton, there's a few issues with that. One is that... Um, the superficial aquifer up there is marginal in terms of salinity for irrigation. So typical groundwater salinities are anywhere between um, 3,000 and 10,000 milligrams per litre at the upper part of the aquifer um, and rapidly getting quite saltier below that. Um, they have a fairly large groundwater demand um, of about 675 megalitres per year. Um, to their credit, they do stay within that allocation, so that for the number of hectares of, of POS they irrigate with that volume, it does stay at about the 7,500 kilolitres per hectare per year that um, DOW will allow, which, given how far north of Perth they are, is um, quite credible. Although, to, do, to achieve that, um, they do shandy with significant amounts of scheme water, not for the purpose of staying within their allocation, but to make sure that um, groundwater salinity is um, managed within what's acceptable. At the moment, the volume of water they use to achieve that um, ends up equating to a cost of around $100,000 per year. So the project that uh, the city have undertaken is split into four distinct components. Um, the CBD stormwater retrofit, which deals with a specific catchment in the centre of town, which is close to their high-end POS, um, the, the areas that are more... Um, high exposure, I guess, that, that are in, you know, in people's face all the time and, and the, the areas the tourists see. Also a lot of high schools um, and other civic areas that, that have high groundwater demand. But the catchment itself also currently discharges to the ocean, so um, it's a fairly clear opportunity there that it's direct um, discharge of stormwater at the moment that could potentially be offsetting this problem with groundwater salinity that they have. Um, another project component is a stormwater harvesting uh, pro, uh, project that's specific to a piece of undeveloped reserve in the town at the moment that's currently going through um, planning amendments to let it be developed to a, a high-end urban development with um, a significant uh, proportion of POS in the middle of that. The city uses, as a lot of areas on the Swan Coastal Plain do, um, quite a lot of sumps, um, and there's a, a more of the old-school sumps, so a chain-link mesh fence around... Um, a vegetated basin, so not particularly high value in terms of amenity. Um, interestingly enough, they have a reasonably unique way of, of maintaining those sumps. Um, the city runs a herd of goats that they move from sump to sump that eat the vegetation uh, in them. Um, some of those sumps don't function particular, particularly well. Um, they're potentially on unsuitable geology, so they might be on... Um, very fine grain, very cemented limestone or um, clay material that doesn't let infiltration happen as efficiently as they'd like. So they observe that um, of their 150-ish uh, sumps, no, sorry, about 200 sumps that are operating in the city limits, about 50 of those have issues um, in terms of slow draining, so they might sit there and stay full, or they'll overtop and be pumped to be discharged to a surface water body, to generally the Chapman River um, or the ocean. And then the final component, which falls outside of the scope of what RPS are working with the city on, is a water efficiency project where the Department of Water wrote them a water conservation plan um, in 2009, I believe it was, that spelt out a series of water conservation measures um, that were recommended for the city in terms of helping them save irrigation water. So the, the fourth component of the project deals with um, implementing those recommendations, but as I said, it's outside the scope of what RPS are um, doing with the city. So in terms of those projects, just to give us some idea of where they are, um, the CBD component is about under the A there, um, the Delacca Street catchment, it's about 60 hectare catchment, like I said, discharging via an outlet to the ocean. Another reason that that 
uh, area was targeted as a discrete project component is that as well as being um, highly visible and high exposure area and being pumped to the ocean at present, um, it does it does have to be manually pumped. It doesn't gravity drain to the ocean. So it discharges to a subsurface vault at the moment, which has um, a two-pump system in there, so there's some redundancy, but even that has failed in the past that results in some um, flooding in that area. So it's was sort of a natural area to target. So that's one of the project components. The Olive Street Reserve is a component of its own, um, which is that, yeah, that uh, undeveloped blob that you can see there, which drains the catchment from up on the ridge there. There's sort of a limestone ridge all the way through Geraldton, about where I'm shakily waving that green dot. Um, and it drains a, a reasonable size catchment from up on the crest down through a 1200 mil um, discharge pipe on the ocean there. So it gets some fair velocities and volumes going through it. Um, the 200 sumps are obviously scattered all the way through town. Um, some of the more highlighted ones to deal with are a series through Webberton and Spalding here that um, are pumped in a cascading fashion from one to the other because none of them drain eff effectively before eventually being discharged to the Chapman River, which comes out of the ocean at Sunset Beach there. Um, and some sumps that have very slow infiltration rates close to some playing fields in the Lonthella area, um, obviously because they're slow draining, but they're also next to very high demands. So some of the challenges that have been faced to date in the project, and I did mean to spell out at the start of this presentation that um, this project is very much a work in progress. It started a couple of months ago. Um, it's at the very early stages. <coughs> Uh, hence it being a little bit light on for technical detail this talk because there isn't much to present at this stage because we haven't done the investigations and come up with the designs and implemented anything yet. So it's very much a, a precursor, I guess, to what will likely be a more detailed presentation um, at some stage in the future. But at this stage, in terms of planning, um, scoping and, and implementing the project to the extent that it has so far, <clears throat> some of the challenges that have been faced is a lack of uh, background and baseline data um, and information in general. The, the City of Greater Geraldton, for those, is there anyone from the City of Greater Geraldton here? Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> I more meant that because if they could make it, I was a little bit unsure why Geoffrey couldn't make it. Um, yes, yeah, so some of the, the, the city's gone through quite a few amalgamations in the last few years. Um, they took in the Shire of Greniff not too long ago. They've recently taken in um, the Shire of Mullower as well. So lots of staff changes, um, which are fairly common from what I've seen in local government anyway, particularly with them though because of the mergers they've been through. Um, so finding internal records has, has proven quite difficult in terms of detailed design or ASCON drawings. Um, there's conflicting information because a lot of the information we go to find about, for example, which sump um, cascades into which in terms of this pumping network in the spalding area. Um, depending on who you talk to at council, there's different stories as to which, pump, which sumps pump where and how many are involved in that system. Um, <coughs> The project is being co-funded by the federal government um, and along with that obviously comes conditions in terms of how that funding's acquitted and the timeline in which it's acquitted. The city uh, went through a fairly rigorous and to some extent painfully slow tender process in, in getting the project to where it is at the moment, which meant that when it was finally awarded to someone, um, the challenge was put down straight away in terms of meeting uh, reasonably tight some would say unrealistic timelines. Um, there's obviously MAR policy to implement um, or to, to be mindful of in this project. Now, the Department of Water are a, a partner on the project and have had quite a lot of involvement. Um, and indications to date are that in terms of assessment under the MAR guidelines, this will be... Uh, I guess it'll have a, a reasonably light level of assessment relative to somewhere where the aquifer isn't already compromised in terms of being of marginal water quality, where there's other competing uses for the aquifer, where there's downstream ecosystems. I mean, Geraldton is reasonably unique in that um, it's not a particularly well-utilised aquifer because of that problem with the um, salinity and the water quality. There is no downstream receiving water bodies um, except for a little bit of groundwater discharge into the, the, um, the Chapman River. Um, and there, there's, not, um, there's not underlying um, usable potable water aquifers either in the, in the Geraldton town site itself. So hopefully it's going to be fairly light on for uh, MAR assessment and policy implementation um, and general environmental considerations um, up there in terms of um, just standard approvals in, you know, when we're going to be proposing you know, working in reserves and um, clearing permits, etc. and that sort of thing. 
So RPS is role in the project. Uh, we've been involved since January after going through the tender process last year and have been selected um, to deliver preliminary investigations to support the development of concept designs, um, a subsection of which will be progressed to detailed design. So at this stage, our engagement, um, the scope of our engagement is up until that detailed design process, so the delivery of um, designs at a, at a level of detail suitable to um, go to civil contractors for implementation. Uh, in terms of our project team who's working on the project, I guess one of the, the focuses and one of the cells um, during our tender response was that we like to think we assembled um, a project team with a considerable local background. Um, I'm obviously looking after the project on at RPS and I'm um, proudly Geraldton born and bred. Um, there's, uh, we've got a range of sub-consultants and sub-contractors helping us on the project. So RPS don't do detailed civil engineering design. Um, we've engaged a local civil engineer to work with us on that. We've got local surveyors up there helping with any surveying requirements. And I guess that the main uh, benefit of our local content that we put into our project team was the use of some drillers up there that have a very good understanding of groundwater. They're quite um, highly trained um, drillers in terms of um, having scientific training. Um, and they've drilled in the area for a long time, so they're very knowledgeable about um, aquifer characteristics and groundwater quality throughout the area. So in terms of how we've structured our preliminary investigations, um, initially we'll start off with, uh, or we, we've already commenced, things like desktop studies and analyses, um, finding out what's already available in terms of existing literature. Um, there's obviously a network of existing bores throughout town uh, from previous studies, um, wind long-term monitoring bores, um, abstraction bores with the potential to be used to get um, static water levels if they've been at rest long enough and, and that sort of thing. So we'll be collecting some background information in terms of getting <coughs> um, mapping of the, of the water table throughout the Geraldton area at a uh, level of detail that, that previously hasn't been available. Um, we've had guys up there performing infiltration testing at these basins to determine um, not just at the surface but um, within the, the sh upper part of the soil profile to try and get a feel for what's causing the infiltration issues at the sumps where there is problems, um, whether it's potentially a, a build-up of silt over time and the, the goats don't eat the silt so the basins are never maintained, or whether it's a, um, you know, an issue with the location of the sumps in terms of the geology that they're sat in. Um, we've got a, a reasonably in-depth exploratory drilling program up there, partly to learn more about the aquifer and the water quality and the water elevation beneath these sumps, um, but also to, to give us the information we need that when we come up with these concept designs to know that we're not going to suggest things like underground infiltration cells um, sitting, you know, where they're going to have to be installed in cat rock and the, the blow the cost out of the water in terms of trying to, um, you know, trying to get them in. So it's providing geotechnical information, I guess, as well as um, groundwater information. Um, so, a few slides here, um, just giving some background as to, to you know, what we're hoping to get out of some of these preliminary investigations and um, the reasons for doing them. <laughs> um, that's not according to RPS oh and policy, I did get picked up on that, that guy in the bottom corner should have a snorkel apparently. Um, <laughs> So once we've assembled all that information, we'll come up with some concept designs. So designs that have been worked to a level of detail that, based on the information we've got, should be feasibly um, implementable, but not designs that have been worked to any great level of detail that aren't going to be ready to go to a contractor for, um, for cost estimates in terms of construction. Um, at a level of detail that is enough to let stakeholders assess the relative merit of these concepts and to pick some that then get progressed to detailed design. I guess some of the things that we're initially looking at and the idea of going through this process of preliminary investigations, etc., is to not um, go into the project with preconceived ideas of what we're going to be implementing. We're trying to keep a sort of very open mind, but the types of things that we're expecting will be considered other types of things you probably expect to be considered, the subsurface infiltration cells, recharge bores to um, give water you know, a pathway down to that superficial aquifer, uh, retrofitting existing pipes networks um, to turn them into leaky networks, so building in some infiltration into those um, existing systems, um, and conversion of, of existing sumps into 
um, sumps that perform better but also serve secondary purposes in terms of um, increased amenity and POS areas. Um, so I guess that's a slide of guys on forklifts lifting stuff up onto a rack. Um, and I guess my reason for having that one in there was, oh, in terms of concept design development, I mean, while we don't want to go in with preconceived ideas, obviously, just because something is technically possible doesn't mean we're going to consider doing it. So I guess the kind of things that we're not thinking of doing, um, and no offence to one of the previous speakers, I guess, but for, I don't think we'll be looking too closely at things like building massive underground storages that are sealed storages and, and hoarding away water over winter to then reuse in summer due to the cost. So there's some things, I guess, that are off the table if we just think they're, they're unlikely to be feasible at all but generally going in with an open mind as to what might be possible. So the sort of sites we're working with, that's a typical um, Geraldton sump without the goats in it at this stage, but overgrown chain link fence, barbed wire strands on the top um, provides very little purpose other than um, infiltration. Uh, these are the sorts of things that we're looking at doing that um, City of Mandurah have previously done. Um, so, um, yeah, standard sort of, well, not standard, but retrofitting of... Um, sumps to turn them into usable POS, but also enhancing their drainage function. Um, yeah, I guess just some slides here to show the sorts of things that are being considered. Um, creation of a leaky network by uh, retrofitting infiltration at, at junction pits in existing pipe networks. Um, installation of recharge bores into sumps to um, give water a pathway through impermeable layers. Uh, recharge trenches and the like. Something that we added to the process um, that wasn't necessarily part of the uh, scope that we were asked to tender on was provision of a concept design workshop. Geraldton uh, have recently just won an award that I'm not going to try and say the name of because I can't quite remember, but it was an international award for um, community engagement, basically. It was... they got quite a bit of exposure for it. I think they were one of um, three local governments in um, Australia that went over to Germany, I think it was, to go to this award process. And, and they won one for the level and the importance they place on community engagement. So we didn't want to go in and, um, and propose ideas that people, I guess, didn't have a chance to have their input on or, or had some uh, mechanism to feel that they had some ownership of. So we'll go up when we've got to the point of um, assembling a suite of concept designs that are, can potentially be implemented. We'll take them up to the community um, and present them to stakeholders, basically, so local community and, and local agency representatives. Once we've done all that, we've come up with the concept designs that people think will work, that they want to see happen. Um, we then, in conjunction with our subcontract civil engineer, work those up into detailed design drawings that are suitable to go to the next stage of the project at. Um, and at this stage, that's where our role would finish. Those de detailed designs will then be tendered to civil contractors for implementation. Um, so the sorts of things the city's hoping to achieve in doing this project um, is an, a better understanding of the Superficial Aquifer Act. At the moment, there's... Um, there's some conflicting anecdotal evidence. There's not a huge amount of work done on the aquifer up there. Um, Geraldton is at the very top of the Swan Coastal Plain, so it's, it's in a reasonably interesting area geologically. And there's a fair bit of variation in, in you know, short spatial, uh, small spatial areas up there. So an ongoing thing that they'll be, uh, ongoing bit of information that they'll be left with, regardless of the designs that come up with, is a much better understanding of the um, superficial aquifer and, and how it reacts to. Um, different ways of being used in terms of storing stormwater. Um, we'll be delivering some detailed designs for specific locations and projects um, that the city can then go to tender with and, and actually start to build before the 30 June next year deadline. Um, and general um, benefits to the city, like increased amenity and flood protection, etc. I think that might be it. It is. Thank you for... Thank you.